good morning everybody and once again welcome back to your channel in today's video i want to talk and show you a small hands-on lab on how to use open api uh, vector embedding and store large vectors in apache hoodie for cost effective data storage uh, we'll be using minio hive metastore and this will basically store our massive large vectors in our hoodie data lake now, why hoodie? Because again, A, uh, you, you are saving money on, on, on the storage. It's cheap to store data on object store, right? Next, point number B, you can incrementally uh, read from this hoodie table and power your downstream uh, vector databases such as Elasticsearch or Postgres, you can use PG vector, right? Or you can use Pinecore, right? So storing your uh, vectors in hoodie and then incrementally only bringing the vector embedding that is necessary for the application. Uh, before I go in a hands-on lab, I have a complete deep dive um, blog on LinkedIn and I also have the exercise file over here. So without wasting any further time, I think it's amazing we do a small hands-on lab. All right, so the first step, uh, we need to spin up the stack. So we'll spin up uh, MinIO Hive Metastore, uh, as you can see on my screen. In the exercise, I have given this docker compose.yml, so it should be straightforward here, right? So all I'll do is I'll say docker compose up hyphen hyphen build minus D. This will start all the containers running in the background. So now let's take a look at the Jupyter Notebook uh, for the exercise, okay? All right. Uh, so over here, uh, I'm simply declaring, uh, as you can see, Spark session. Uh, I'm using Spark 3.4 and uh, the best OD version I can use for this is 0.14.0. And then over here, I create a Spark session, as you can see. I, I, I define uh, Spark core max, Spark executor cores, and then Spark executor memory to 2G over here, as you can see. Then these are the settings for our MinIO. I set up my AWS access or MinIO access, MinIO secret, S3A endpoint. So all of that I declare over here. So I'm gonna simply run the cell. This will create the Spark session. So I'm running the cell right now. And as you can see, the Spark session has now been created. So now in order to use uh, OpenAI uh, vector embedding, uh, I'm gonna use their REST API. So what you need to do over here, I have defined a UDF in Spark, okay? So any text that I pass in, this will call the open API vector embedding. It will get the particular vector, convert the vector into a string, and it will store that into the data link. Wherever you see that XXX, replace that with your open API access and secret uh, access key, okay? There will be an API key given to you on your open API uh, account. Simply put that over here. I'm gonna pause the video, I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna execute, and I'm gonna go to the next step. So make sure to not disclose your API key uh, whenever you are pushing any item. So make sure uh, you know you take uh, good care of that. So let me pause the video. I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna run the cell and go to the next step, okay? All right, I have executed that particular cell, the above cell. Now here, I can see I'm defining the schema. I have text ID, which is gonna be a UUID, right? These are the text that I'm interested, just sample text. I create a Spark data frame over here, as you can see. And then I call that UDF function, embedding UDF, I pass in the text. And if I simply run the cell, you will see uh, it will first print the Spark data frame and then the, it will basically call the UDF and it will show you the vectors over here. You can see that, right? Uh, these are dense vector, large, uh, you know, vectors. And now I'm using Spark SQL to create hoodie data lake. So here I'm setting data skipping to true, column stats to two, uh, record level index to true, and then I just create a hoodie data lake on MinIO. So if I open up my Chrome, Chrome, sorry, and head over to localhost 9000, and if I put uh, admin and password, I should see a MinIO bucket. I have some sample data, so I'm just gonna delete that. All right, so I'm gonna run this. As you can see, now it's gonna create the hoodie data lake. And now I'm gonna simply insert that data into hoodie. So inserting the data, so if I refresh here, you can see hoodie metadata and soon I would see the parquet file. Great, we were able to insert these large vectors into hoodie data lake. Uh, you can now, you know, perform incremental queries. So for example, you can say, hey, give me, uh, you know, the text and the particular hoodie commit time and, you know, let's say the vector. And as you can see, I'm performing an incremental query, you know, and now you can load this into here. I have given you all the links again. 
If you want to load data to Postgres, I have a link. If you want to load data from Hoodie incrementally into Elasticsearch, I have the code and the link, as you can see, right? You can also do point lookups, right? So you can say, hey, I want to do something like this, right? I do not have that particular ID, but I want to show you that you can even perform point lookups on that, okay? Uh, I can actually take one of the IDs here and show you if needed. So let me just grab ID and then I'm going to say truncate. False. Uh, I'm going to grab one of the IDs here and simply paste it over here. Perfect, right? You got the particular vector, right? Uh, you can enhance your hoodie tables. I want to definitely cover these two points, right? So temporal filtering, you can store the uh, store the embedding for the last 30 days. So for example, what I want to say is, let's say in your AI application, you don't want to store all the vectors, right? Because it's expensive to, you know, uh, keep all the vectors and it takes space and it costs money as well. So maybe you just want to bring the last 30 days of vector or last 90 days or whatever the case is. You can incrementally fetch from these hoodie tables and then bring those vectors into your pinecone, Elasticsearch, or PG vector, whatever that is, right? So wanted to you know cover that point. Uh, also, one more point I want to cover is you can add tags and, and keywords uh, to your hoodie data lake. So now you can say, hey, give me all the vector for this particular tag or this particular keyword. You can do all of that and then bring those embedding into your downstream vector database, right? So that's all I have. Uh, I, uh, I know the lab is pretty simple. I wanted to make it simple. This lab shows you how to call open API API and store the vectors in your hoodie data lakes uh, for further downstream processing. Remember, the reason we are storing these large vectors into hoodie is because a number one, it's cheap, right? Uh, storage cost is cheap, right? We are saving money on that, right? Number two, you, are on, you can do incremental data processing. Bring only the vectors that you need for your application, right? All right, that's all I have. I hope you have enjoyed the exercise material. The, the blog would be there in the description. If needed, check it out. And if you have any further questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming. I'll see you in the next video.